everyone welcome to the channel so in this video i'm gonna show you how to create a rainfall map using kringing interpolation method in rgis pro so now let's get started so now let me explain about the kringing interpolation so kringing is a geostatistical interpolation technique used in rgis pro so for creating a continuous surface or a prediction from a scattered set of points with spatially correlated data it is particularly effective in predicting the unknown values at various location within the study area based on the observed values from the surrounding locations. So types of kringing. So we have three different types. First is an ordinary kringing assumes a constant unknown mean and it is a most commonly used method. The simple kringing assumes a known mean across the entire area and universal kringing assumes a mean that changes according to the deterministic function. So advantage of kringing, so it is an accurate prediction, provides the best linear unbiased prediction. Error estimation, kringing offers a measure of uh, prediction uncertainty and flexibility. It's so suitable for various types of spatial data and assumptions. So the disadvantage is the following. So it is uh, computational intensive, so it can be resource intensive for a large data set. And application of uh, kringing, so it is envir in environmental science predicting the pollutant concentration and soil properties. In hydrology, estimating the groundwater levels and rainfall patterns. And in mining, estimating ore grades and mineral concentration. And agriculture, yield mapping and uh, soil nutrient estimation. So now let me get back to RGIS Pro. So in the table of content section, so in the table of content section, you can able to visualize, we have a shape file called study area. So you can able to visualize, this is our study area. So now uh, let me uh, sh show you my rainfall data here. So this is my rainfall data containing FID, longitude and latitude with the rainfall in millimeters. You can able to visualize, we have three different stations for the specific study area. So now we're going to import my Excel data containing rainfall data into RGIS Pro. So for that, let me navigate to my Excel here containing my rainfall data. I'm going to click this option called file and click this option called save as and browse to the folder location where you would like to save your rainfall data as a CSV file format. So uh, this is my uh, file rainfall. So I'm going to enter as CSV here. So now save as type, we're going to select as a CSV file format that is comma delimited. So we're going to click this file format called CSV. So once you did that, we're going to click this option called save. So now the file has saved. So once you're saved as a CSV file format, now let me get back to RGIS Pro. So now uh, to add our rainfall data into uh, RGIS Pro, so navigate to this option called add data. In that, we're going to click this option called XY point data. And once you did that, a uh, window saying geoprocessing has popped up XY table to point. And in that, we're going to click this option called the input table here. We're going to select our the rainfall data where we are saved to a suitable folder location. So I'm going to navigate to the folder location where I have saved my rainfall data. I'm going to click this option called browse. So now I have navigated to the folder location where I have saved my rainfall data as a CSV file format. So I'm going to click this rainfall CSV dot CSV and we're going to click OK. So once you navigated your input table here, that is your Excel file. Next, we're going to select the YX field as longitude and the Y field as latitude. So once you selected the X and Y field, so we don't have any Z field. Now choose your coordinate system. So we're going to select the coordinate system to be the current map. That is GCS WGS 1984. So once you did that, we're going to click this option called run to convert our XY table to point. So our XY table to point has been converted. You can able to visualize from here in the content section, rainfall CSV XY table to point. So now here you can able to visualize our rainfall CSV XY table to point. Let me change the color. So we're going to add this particular color here, the red color. So this is the three rainfall station for this specific study area here. So now let us check this out, the attribute table of this point data. So we're going to right click and click this option called attribute table. And uh, we're going to visualize our latitude, our longitude, latitude and, and rainfall in millimeters for the specific study area. You can able to see that. So let me close this. So now we're going to create our the rainfall raster using a ringing interpolation uh, technique here. So for that, we're going to navigate to this option called analysis. We're going to click analysis and in that we're going to click this option called tools. So now in the geoprocessing uh, window here, enter as ringing and uh, click enter. 
So now select this uh, tool called Tringing Spatial Analysis Tool. Interpolates the surface, uh, the raster surface from point using Tringing. We're gonna click this. So now in the parameter section and in the input point feature, we're gonna select our rainfall CSV XY table to point. And on the Z value, we're gonna select our rainfall and choose your output location where you could like to save your raster, your rainfall raster. So once you navigated a folder location, have entered as rainfall bringing interpolation dot if, we're gonna click save. So once you did that, we're gonna navigate to this option called semi variogram properties. So you can check out what is the semi semi variogram properties here. So semi variogram uh, model to be used. There are two uh, methods for bringing that is ordinary and universal. So the ordinary cringing can use the following semi variogram models spherical, circular, exponential, and Gaussian and linear. So we're gonna stick with our spherical, uh, the default one here. And the, in case of universal cringing, uh, can be used with the following uh, options here that is linear with a linear drift and linear with a quadratic uh, drift. So for this uh, semi variogram properties, we're gonna stick with our the cringing method, we're gonna select as ordinary and the semi variogram model to be spherical. So now let me explain about the semi variogram model here. So here semi variogram models. So there is different types of semi variogram models starting from circular, spherical, exponential, Gaussian and linear. So for spherical model. So this model shows a progressive decrease of spatial autocorrelation until some distance beyond which the autocorrelation is zero and the spatial uh, the spherical model is one of the most commonly used model. So the link will be given in the description about the different spherical uh, models here. So you can go through the semi variogram, the different semi variogram models here. The link will be given in the description. So now let me get back to RGIS Pro. So once you've selected the semi variogram properties, now navigate to this option called output cell size and make sure that you leave as the default value here. And the next set of option is our search radius. In search radius, we have two different options. One is variable and fixed. So in search radius, we have two different options here. So click this option called the eye icon here. So you can go through about this uh, fixed and uh, the variable options. So the variable uses a variable search radius in order to find a specified number of input sample points for the interpolation. So the fixed uses a specified distance within which all input points will be used for the interpolation. So you can go through this uh, search radius option here. And now once you did that, we're going to navigate to this parameter section. So we're going to select our search radius to be variable. And now next we're going to click this option called environments. So in the output coordinate system, we're going to select our current map. And now the processing extent, we're going to select our study area. So this is our study area. So you can able to see that we have selected this processing extent to be our study area. Next, the raster analysis. In the raster analysis, we have these three different options here, cell size, cell size projection method and mask. So in that, we're going to navigate to the mask section here and we're going to click this option called study area and leave the rest of the things as the default. And now we're going to click this option called run. So it is running. We can able to see that. So now we have our rainfall uh, raster we are created using bringing interpolation method. So now let me navigate to this option called this uh, layer called rainfall uh, bringing interpolation. We can right click and click this option called symbology. And in that we're going to select our uh, color scheme here. So you can select the uh, color scheme of your choice here. So you're going to select uh, the specific color scheme. So you can also select the different color scheme. Let me select the specific color here. And also in the symbology section, you can uh, go through the different methods. For example, in the method section we have uh, selected as a geometric interval. So you can also select this option called natural breaks. So this is natural breaks. And uh, let me select another one. This is a equal interval. This is the equal interval. And next, uh, let me select this uh, standard deviation. So you can uh, check out the different methods that is available in the symbology section here. So you can also reduce the number of classes. So you're going to reduce the number of classes to be 5. 
So from this uh, map here, you can be able to see that the highest level of rainfall being received in this uh, specific uh, these two rainfall stations, and the lowest level of rainfall is being received in this uh, rainfall station here. So now uh, we're gonna add the contour lines for this rainfall uh, map here. So for that, we're gonna navigate this option in the analysis section. We're gonna click this option called Tools, and now here we're gonna enter as contour. So now I have entered as contour here, and click this option called Contour Spatial Analysis Tool. So now the input raster will be our rainfall bringing interpolation. Now choose your output file location where you'd like to save this file. So now I have entered as rainfall contour. I'm gonna click save and choose your contour interval here. So now I have entered my contour interval. So according to this uh, map here, so enter the contour interval to be around 138.58. So I've arrived this value uh, basically minusing this uh, value here. That is 1198 minus 1238. So we're going to get this contour here, so this particular value and uh, leave the rest of the things as the default and uh, let me click this option called run here. So the contour is completed, so the contour lines has been added here, you can able to see here. Let me turn this off, so you can able to see the contour lines here. So now we have managed to create our contour, so let me create a rainfall map. So now I have managed to create a rainfall map. So in this video, I have shown you how to create a rainfall map using a Kringing interpolation method in RGIS Pro. So thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe to our channel and give us a like.